Hi, welcome to this short introduction to linear programming. Uh, as you know, resource allocation requires that decision makers consider many constraints that they face in their daily business. These constraints can be labor constraints, capital constraints, they can also be behavioral restrictions. And fortunately, linear programming is a technique used uh, to provide solutions to such kind of problems involving constrained uh, resource allocation decisions. Uh, we are going to start with an example of a company, company um, that is concerned with maximizing its profit, like every business. So this company produces two products, product one and product two, and it has a set of available resources. And this is how it allocates its resources to produce each unit of, of uh, these two products. For example, it has raw materials, and to produce one unit of this product, one it, it uses 20 uh, uh, units of this resource and five hours of machine time. And it has two assemblies. First, the, the, the two products are uh, initially processed and then they are sent to each to uh, separate assemblies. This one is sent to assembly, this assembly, while this one is sent to assembly two. So there are two divisions. And each of these assemblies also ha can only, uh, ha the, the, the capacity is limited. Uh, assembly 1 can have only uh, 6 uh, units of product 1, whereas assembly 2 can have only 9 units. So this is the uh, word formulation of the problem. And last but not least, you have a profit contribution of each unit of this um, so this is product one contributes hundred dollars per unit to the profit, and the contribution of product two is sixty dollars per unit. And when we know this information, we can transform it into a linear programming formulation. Let me write it clearly here. And first of all, we want to maximize, as we say, the profit of this company. Uh, and we want to find out which combinations of these, out, uh, these products, um, which, which outputs of this, co uh, which combination of outputs gives us the optimal um, uh, which, 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 which combinations are optimal, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> um, that can give us the maximum possible profit. And this is our objective. So we say this, we call this as our objective function. Objective function. So we want to find out optimal combination of outputs that can give us maximum possible profit. Notice that this is the sum of both contributions. So what we are considering is the total profit. Now, we say uh, this is our objective function and we, we, we write here subject 2, st short for subject 2. And we want to also, uh, in our calculation, want to consider, because there is no free ride, no free lunch, uh, our restriction. We cannot have limitless profit. Our profit is restricted by the uh, resources available to us. And this is 20 times x1 plus 40 times x2 it cannot be more than what we have. This resource usage cannot be more than 400. So it's less than or equal to 400. Similarly, 5x1 plus 2x2 is less than or equal to 40. x1 less than or equal to 6 shows the capacity of assembly 1 for product 1. 
and x2 is less than or equal to 9. Now, we want to uh, show a graphical solution. But one very important additional uh, restriction is that we want uh, to say x1 and x2 are non-negative. We, can, we, we are in a business world, we are not expecting a negative output. Our output should be positive. That's another restriction. And it's, it's also good for our graphical solution because we will not be considering any negative uh, x1 or any negative x2. So, um, so far so good. Now, we take this equation and Let's, as we said, the maximum possible uh, that can uh, satisfy this equation is if we equate it with 400. Um, so, the upper limit is 400 and we say, uh, we start with a linear equation which is 220x1 plus 40x2 is equal to 40. But remember, we can also have, um, um, it's possible to use less than the amount of raw materials. Uh, that's our maximum number. We can, we, can, we, can use, we can use less than the maximum number. So it's possible to have uh, below this figure. Um, we do the same for all these uh, inequalities. And finally, we combine all these, uh, and it gives us this shaded area, which we call feasible uh, solution set, or feasible solution space. It's the shaded area. And uh, it means that in this area, we are simultaneously uh, um, satisfying all our constraints. For example, if we take the only this one, when x is equal to or less than 9, it, it, it was, as the arrow indicates, anything below this line, but not negative. But that is only if we consider x is 2 less than or equal to 9. But that's not the only constraint we have, therefore we are considering more than one constraint. x is equal to less than 9, as x is equal to or less than 6, and then this equation, and then this equation. And that's why we have four lines. And the, the set that satisfies simultaneously all these restrictions is our feasible solution space. Now, we want, we want to, to know our maximum uh, possible profit. And we just combine this objective function and this feasible solution space, and that's how we get uh, our optimal um, uh, output combination. In this case, uh, uh, by the way, it's also good to, to mention here that there is something, something called ISO profit lines. Uh, as you see, ISO is just the same profit. These are lines, if we have this, uh, this uh, graph, these are lines which any point in each, on each line gives us the same profit. For example, in this line 1, 2, 3, for example, in this line, if we are here, or if we are here, or if we are here, it doesn't matter. We are getting the same profit. We are just changing the combination. More of uh, one output or maybe or less of one output, but still the profit we are getting is the same. These are called isoprofit. And the higher the line, the more the profit. So we make some iso lines, and the iso line, for example, we could have some. Um, let me take another color. One iso line here, one iso line. Here, one, another iso line, there. As you see, also another iso line here. This one is obviously below the maximum uh, feasible point. 
here. This ISO line and this ISO, uh, ISO profit, these two they are above or beyond the feasible uh, set. So these are impossible because they are not in the feasible set. But the maximum possible ISO profit that lies on the feasible uh, solution space, that's where we, where we get our, our answer. And then combining the graphs of this, uh, as we said, feasible solution space and objective function yields the output combination point within the feasible uh, solution space that lies on the highest possible ISO profit line. Now, this, uh, as I said, is when we have x1 is equal to 5 and x2 is equal to 7.5. Let's check that one. Uh, that means, yeah, 950. 900. That's when I have drawn this here. That's when x1 is equal to, this is x1, this is x2. That's when x1 is equal to 5. It should be somewhere here. Five and seven point five. And at this point, if we put x one in the profit function, which was maximizing hundred times x one plus sixty times x two, if we put hundred. 5 plus 60, x2 is 7.5, then we have 950. So the profit we are getting when we are producing optimal, when we are producing at the uh, solution point, which is the optimal point, then we, are, we, we have to be getting this profit. The total contribution of profit by each output, which is output 1 is 5, output 2 is 7.5, then that profit should be 950. Uh, there could be uh, also, in another case, there could be multiple solutions. For example, what in this case now we have only the, the ISO profit is touching our graph only at this point, but what if it's touching at two points, this one and this one, then in this case, uh, when the ISO profit coincides with one of the boundaries of the feasible solution, we have multiple solutions. Um, another thing I wanted to, to uh, mention before I conclude uh, this uh, short uh, introduction is that, yes, First of all, this is a very simple exercise which involves only two outputs. If we have multiple outputs, uh, then um, and, and, and if it's obviously if, if, if it's difficult here, for example, if, if it's difficult to read these coordinates, we can use simultaneous um, equations to solve. Let's let's quickly. Uh, Check, for example, if we get the same, 2x1, 20x1 plus 40x, x2 is equal to 400, 5x1 plus 2x2 is equal to 40. Now, we have two unknowns and two equations, and we can say, for example, uh, 2x2 is equal to 40 minus... 5x1. Now we have x2, and if we put this, the value of x2 here, into one of the equations, then we will get uh, x1 is equal to 5, x2 is equal to 7.5, which is the same solution we got. Uh, by the graph uh, uh, method. 
Another thing I wanted to mention is that there's also what's called uh, Slack variables. Uh, let me quickly mention that. Slack, we, we are not only interested in our optimal outputs, we are also interested uh, uh, is there any any of the any idle resource? It's like it's, it's simply it stands for idle resource. It's like are there any unused resources? Let's check. For example, uh, we had we had twenty twenty x one x one is five. Uh, plus 4t, 5, 7.5 is equal to 400. This is true. Again, we had 5x1 plus 2x2 is equal to 40. This is again true. Now, uh, We found out that x1 